All right, guys, we're going to do lesson 11-2. Lesson 11-2 is dealing with mean, median, mode, and range. So what I'm going to do is one example of each kind. Okay, if you need more examples, make sure you check the notes, and that'll give you some more examples. But I'm pretty sure many of you have done this before, so it should come back to you prayer fairly easy. All right, first thing I want to do let's write down some data this is just numbers that they gave us and again this is very real life math um, teachers use this all the time to look at test scores and how kids are doing we look at this to um, talk about uh, progress like in a business like how things are selling um, you know all kinds of data can be used um, in a form of finding the mean, median, mode, and range to help people get an understanding about how things are going. So, you know, hopefully you can kind of learn how to use this in a real world situation someday. So here's some numbers I gave you. They're completely random, and again, this is right off of our notes. Um, they're not in order. And the first thing I'm going to solve for is our mean. Okay, the mean is always going to be the sum of all the numbers given divided by how many numbers are given. Okay, so if I were to do 4 plus 7 plus 8 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 2, I would get the answer of 30. Okay? 30 is the answer when I add all of these digits up. But that's not the end of it. For the mean, now I must divide this by how many digits I was given. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I was given eight different numbers or eight different digits, okay? So when I divide here, okay, remember the first number always goes inside the box or in the calculator first, depending on what you're using. Okay, so if I divide this, I'm actually going to get a decimal answer of 3.75, okay? And that's my answer. 3.75, or if you were doing this and you wanted to leave it as a fraction, you would have had 3 and 3 fourths. Okay? This is the mean. So when you're solving for something and it wants the mean, it's always the add, then the divide. So if you memorize that little step, that'll help you in finding the mean. Okay? Now let's find the median. Think of when your parents are driving and they're going down a street and there's a median strip. What is the median strip? Well, if you look at a road and it has like a sidewalk or a block of some sort or concrete dividing two different roads, okay? This is what we call a median strip, which runs down the middle of the two lanes. So when you think median, sorry, my pen's acting funny all of a sudden. Think of middle. What is in the middle of the data? All right, so again, we're going to use the same numbers we used on the last slide. Okay, and I put them in the same order I did when I first got them. But now, in order to find the median, the first thing you need to do is put them in order. Okay, so I'm going to come down here and put my numbers in order. So I have a 1, a 2, a 2, a 2. I got three of those. 4, 4, 7, Eight. Okay? Now what you're going to do is start checking them off. Start canceling them off. You go from outside in. 
So you work your way in to the middle, to the median. So 1 cancels with the 8. 2 cancels with the 7. 2 cancels with the 4. Oh, well, if I cancel those both out, then I have no middle number. So when that happens, when you have two left over, circle them, okay? You're going to do 2 plus 4. Now you're going to find the mean of these two numbers, which gives you 6. Now how many numbers were you given? You were given 2, which means you're going to take 6. You're going to divide it by 2. You're going to divide it in half. So the middle number between these two numbers is going to give you three, because the answer here is three. So the median is three. Now if you were canceling these out and you literally came down to just one option, then you don't have to do this. You would just have that one option. So let's, let's show you here what I mean by that. Okay? Let me make my eraser a little bit bigger than super teeny. So let's say I had given you this as the data, but there was actually one more digit on the end. Let's say there was a 10. Okay, so I'd have 1, 2, 2, 2. Sorry, my pin's acting a little funny there. 4, 4, 7. Wow, that doesn't look like a 7. Come on, pin, catch up with me. 7 and then 10. Oh, no, 8. And then 10. So when you start canceling these out, we should wind up with one digit left by itself in the center. And we did. We were left with four. So when that happens, it's just four. You don't have to worry about adding and dividing. All right, let's try our next type of problem with this. We did the mean, we did the median, and now we're doing the mode. All right. The mode, I always like to have fun with the word, because I always think of mo, like mo ice cream. You want something you have the most of, okay? Mode should remind you of most. What number repeats the most? All right, again, going back to the numbers that we were given, and I'm going to go ahead and put them in order this time like I did for the last one. You don't have to put them in order. I'm just doing this to kind of help real fast look real quick. Wow, which one do I have the most of? I only have one one. I have three twos. I have two fours. I have one seven, one eight. Well, what number repeats the most are my twos. So my mode is going to be two. It's the number that repeats the most. Okay, that one's usually the easiest one for you guys to get really fast. All right, next one. And last one, we have range. If you ever heard someone say, well, it fell in the range of like 5 to 10, means it's somewhere in the middle there, okay? But the range we're solving for today is an exact number. So we're not kind of, you know, oh, it's between. No, we need an exact number. So again, with the same numbers we've been using, I'm going to keep them in order like I did on the last couple problems just because it does make it a little easier when you have these in order. Um, and with range, you want to put them in order from least to greatest because you need to know what the highest value is and what the lowest value is. Okay, so it might help you to put them in order. If you're pretty fast and quick and can look at it, then okay. Just don't make a mistake. So what is my smallest number up here? My smallest number is a 1. What is my largest number up here? My largest number is an 8. Okay, now I'm going to subtract these two digits. Now I'm not going to do 1 take away 8 because that would give me a negative number. That's not what we're looking for here. I'm going to go ahead and do 8 take away 1. When I do 8 take away 1, I get 7. That's it, friends. 